On Arrow Point, we have our zooplankton farm. And this is a large tank facility where every week we feed the zooplankton a concoction of yeast, just regular bread yeast, flour, and sugar. Every week, there's about a million zooplankton getting released into the lake. And it's an incubator. We have zooplankton. We feed them. They breed and grow over the week, and then we release them into the lake. The zooplankton farm is fed by lake water. And throughout the summer, we're feeding and releasing to try and boost the population of zooplankton in the lake as zooplankton are a predator of the cyanobacteria, which is a real problem. Back in the 70s, the state thought that it would be important to stock the lake with alewife to support a trophy bass fishing, fishing lake. When the state introduced alewives to the lake, the zooplankton population crashed. And zooplankton are an important species to control the population of cyanobacteria as they predate on cyanobacteria. Zooplankton is another type of organism that is found in all aquatic bodies of water. It is also towards the base of the food chain, but it is the first consumer of the aquatic food chain. So it eats all of photosynthetic organisms such as cyanobacteria. It is a small multicellular eukaryotic organism, and there are many, many types of different zooplankton. The zooplankton farm is about the size of a large swimming pool, and it is about 10 feet deep. There are four main forebays in the farm, and there are aerators between each forebay to help circulate the water, as you don't want it to go anoxic. That green material on the top is not algae or cyanobacteria. It is actually the world's smallest vascular plant called duckweed which enjoys still water. How the farm drains is there is a lever, as you can see on screen now, that if you pull up, the water then will flow from the farm to a catch basin and out to the lake. And because the zooplankton farm is slightly higher in elevation than the lake, it drains down gradient and doesn't require energy. It takes about an hour for the farm to drain about a foot. And after that, we shut the valve and let it refill. To refill the farm, we have an electric pump that turns on and off every three hours so it doesn't short circuit, and it takes about a full week to refill the foot of water because it is going up gradient and it takes more energy. In the paleo records, there are sedimentation cores that the, the task force did to understand how the lake has been behaving over the years. They can actually see when the state introduced alewives to the lake zooplankton population went to zero. A healthy population of zooplankton in the lake is around 10 zooplankton per liter of water. Um, right now, the lake is around two or three zooplankton per liter of water. And we're trying to boost that back to a healthy condition, which is um, you know closer to 10 zooplankton per liter of water. Since the zooplankton farm has began, the numbers have increased, and we've watched the population of zooplankton in the lake increase. And we will continue to watch and test the waters to make sure that the population of zooplankton are still increasing with the operation of our zooplankton farm. And our, our hope is that we can get the lake back to that healthy population of around 10 zooplankton per liter of water. How we do this is through what is called a zooplankton net. This zooplankton net is a fine mesh that captures all the microorganisms in the water. It has a button at the bottom that we press to seal all the water in, and we lower it down to the bottom of the water column, which tends to be around 10 meters, and then we, at a steady pace, bring it up throughout the water column. It collects all of the organisms that were in that water column, and then we are able to use that, calculate the amount of water that went through the net, because we know the depth and we know the, um, the size of the net, and that's how we are able to come up with a concentration of organisms per liter of water. The zooplankton farm is not a management tool we recommend every lake takes. This farm was designed using 
previous historical data and a very specific circumstance with the introduction of the alewife. It is possible that this could be used as a management tool for other lakes that have been affected by the alewife, but, but we don't recommend just altering the zooplankton population as a whole. The zooplankton population of a lake is very specific and very delicately balanced. This large-scale alteration is occurring because of how destroyed we made that food chain and how we are trying to restore it. Through the core data that we have, we know that specifically we want to grow Daphnia magna and Daphnia pulix in our zooplankton farm. And you can see a, an example of a Daphnia magna on screen right now. The other way we are trying to restore the food web in Lake Warmog is through stocking of brown trout, which we will talk about in the next video.